Hola, hello everybody. Hola. Simon Holden from my Canary Island base. Uh, after suffering what they call the Tormenta Tropical, tropical storm, that it seems to have passed through. So we're out here on the balcony and stuck inside all weekend. Uh, Judge, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, lovely, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it's been been up and down week, but um, more ups and downs, which is the most important yeah. thing. And uh, talking of your trial, it's a big, big, big winning double on Friday and a, a big oh, winning yeah. the day before. So you're into the last week, mate. It's going to be a fantastic week, I am sure. But yeah. uh, today we're looking at some horses to follow. It's Judges Jewels. We are back. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't come on on Friday because of uh, tech problems caused by <laughs> the uh, the fact that I thought this uh, apartmentos was going to uh, fall into the sea over the weekend. But uh, we are back now. So apologies for our non-appearance on Friday. Entirely my fault. Um, Right, Judge, there are some horses running on Saturday that, or the last week that you flagged up. You just want to go through them, mate. I know people that follow them. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, re in recent times, I mean, obviously, the one that we're part of just a couple of few weeks ago was Golden Apollo, and um, he, he won the other 18 to 1 at Ponte. I mean, that, that was a nice one. Also, Young Fire was 33 into 12. So I thought that was unlucky on Saturday. We had Nomadic Empire, once again, um, drawn the wrong side, one easily his side of the track, third at six to one. And even if you go way back when, which I've actually, even I've nearly given up on, the old called Caradoc, came fourth in this, <laughs> the Cambridgeshire at 66s, if you kept the faith. Um, but um, it just shows you that, um, you know, that these are horses that going forwards are well handy at capped. Of course, once they've won or you, you think that's that you've had enough, knock them on the head. But it just shows you that they are still there, mate, and they're still winning and running races. Yeah, yeah. Stick, stick with the ones. Get them in your tracker. And yep. When they win, you know, move on. Um, right. You got three, and I've got two. I Josh, have. So the logical thing would be to get you to go first, mate. Oh well, that's that's most unlike you. Then slightly being logical. No, well, I'm definitely no. going to start. I'm going to start on the Friday. There, there was a race at Haydock, which an unbelievably messy race. I was throwing my yeah. toys out the pram because, as you know, I had double cherry, which was the second part of the double. And I, I nearly got put through the rain. I thought, crikey, I, it's, it's been a bad, bad run of being beaten in photographs. It was just nice to get one home. But one in that race for me has, was stood out like a sore thumb was Post Impressionist. Now, if you, I think that's actually a good race. I know they finished about five in a heat, but I think that's a good race. As we, we flagged a race up at York, that sprint race the other day, um, and it's, you know, with Pink Crystal and that, that's thrown up loads of horses that have either won or run well since Lucky Man and horses like that. This race, I think, even though they're all in a line, I think we'll throw up winners. And Post Impressionist, at the start of this season, was uh, was 13 to 8 um, to run off levels against Ida Alderov, who ended up winning the um, St. Ledger later on this, in the year. And in that race, there was three horses rated um, either 88 or higher. Well, this horse is currently rated 86. I don't think the handicap would drop him after, after the run on Friday. But um, I like the fact this horse went up in trip. Um, and also, it looked to me like it was rallying. I think it possibly could have won with a clearer run. I'm glad it didn't, personally, because uh, I still think Double Cherry was pretty unlucky if it didn't win. But I think the two of them were the two horses to take out the race going forwards. And Post Impressionist, if you can remember way back when, side was favourite for the King George V handicap at, uh, at Ascot. It's almost been like a forgotten horse. Um, I think there's a bit of... Um, business to be had with this 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 fella and i think uh, now's the time to start um, looking at it for, for runs coming forward and there's got to be a race or two that it come the back end of the season it's proved now it can handle good to soft ground so for me post impressionist it's going to paint a picture for us superb superb um yeah I, I agree with you i think that's a very warm race that race um now i'm going to go for the first one in the cambridgeshire for a horse that completely bombed out. So on the surface, you would think this is an, an odd choice, but it's that awful cliche, Judge, put a line through this performance. Yeah. I'll explain why. Um, now, it was the usual cash, cavalry charge, easy for me to say, and I think they went too fast, and the Shannon horse, uh, Majestic, basically outstayed them all. Um, but in 20th place was Perotto, trained by Marcus Tregonin, ridden by Willie Lee. Now, Perotto, I can pass on, 
has been working really, really well. He has won these big handicaps before, and then he got yeah. weighted up to the hill, and he, he played his trade in sort of small field listed group races. Not really his thing. He needs, <coughs> excuse me, a real strong pace to run at. Now, the horse was back from 33s to 18s uh, on yeah. the strength of how he's working at home. dragonin has got his stable bang in form again after a, a sort of tricky season. And basically, confidence was high. The race has just proved to be a disaster from the start. I don't know what Woody Lee was doing, but it, the horse didn't seem ready. If you watch the replay, he, he, he completely fluffs the start. Yeah. Now, I think then the jockey has thought, you know, Christ, what have I done here? And has just got after him. And if you watch the replay, he goes from being stunned last to being in like the front three I, I within like, like a furlong and a half and i'm sat watching it and thinking well yeah i'm in the front four but this horse has absolutely no chance of yeah. seeing his trip out he's used up all his gas at completely yeah. the wrong time I, i've no idea what i'm sure willie lays held his hand up and said i just got it wrong you know um yeah i mean i'll read the official comments dwell chased leaders near side ridden week and two out well i mean what more can you kind say of, kind there of was no, for itself, didn't it? yeah if you back Perotto, i don't know many of you did and i i did quite heavily basically you had no chance given that he blew you can't blow the start of a major handicap nobody no. can give top handicappers a start like that but what you can't then do is rush them up um, you can't you can't sprint for a nine furlongs you just no, no horse can do it um no. I've only so ever seen one, and that was Frankel. <laughs> Frankel, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he only did it really once like that, didn't he? Um, yeah. yeah, so a massive line through it. Porosa is working well. He's never been a horse that's played up like that. Uh, I just think it was a one of them things. I think he'll be out again soon. I think he'll be a bigger price than he should be, and, and I'm going to stick with him. And just He's never done that before, so I don't see any reason why a pattern's going to emerge. And uh, I think he's a very high-class handicapper who is informed. So I'm going to stick with Perotto. He is a big, big player for me next time. I want my money back, Judge. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got to be honest, because he was kind of on my radar, simply because Trigonin's got quite a good record in the Cambridgeshire, isn't he? So he's, very, he's big very. field handicaps. And, and I know I know, we're getting to the back end of the season. He might, put them, you'd like to think, probably one, two runs maximum. He might yeah. be the type of the Lincoln, mate, mightn't he? You, you know, even if he doesn't get the win, you know, beginning yeah. of next year is what I'm getting at. So... He is definitely getting to stage. He's getting handicapped now, isn't he? You know, he's going yeah. to be in these top handicaps. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't put you off him. I, I like these kind of horses that look like they've run badly, but they haven't. You know, we've seen yeah. Orban before, haven't we? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, going on to, shall I go on to my second one? I think so. Well, bearing in mind we were looking at the sort of at Haydock and Newmarket at the weekend, I, I, I like to, I had a little look at Chester, you know, and, I, and there was a couple that caught my eye in the, um, the seven and a half furlong handicap there, the five ten on the Saturday, and um, Devil Waller won the race. Um, but there was there was there was two that really caught my eye, quite similar type colours. The first one is the one I'm going to tip up, which is Metabolt. So mm. this horse has only run four times now, so it's coming into this race on handicap debut, seasoned handicap with sixteen runners. It's gone off two to one favourite, so I, I gather they think it's in front of its mark. Yeah. It, as they turned into the home straight, one went clear. He's got boxed in, couldn't get out, and then come through, and he's come wide, finished like a steam train, and come fourth. I think they obviously, the fact it was backed off the balls, they think he's in front of his mark. I think this is an obvious one. So for me, he's definitely one to keep an eye on. And there was a funny one in behind. Just keep an eye on this, because he's not one I'm going to put up as an official jewel, but I'm definitely going to follow it. I put it in my tracker. It's a horse called Sea Tog. Um, easy for me to say. The same trainer, believe it or not, Mark, uh, Mark Lock name, C I O T O G. A very similar run, actually, but he was 33 to 1, and um, he, he mm. did something similar and finished just a bit further behind. Watch that race back and see what you think. But for me, Metabolt is one to put in your tracker. Yeah, Metabolt, yeah, and of course, Chester's such a quirky place, isn't it? Yes. Um, now, on the subject of quirky places, my second one ran at the. Uh, you know, the quirkiest of the lot, Epsom, yesterday. Right, uh, yeah. 
the four o'clock was only a small field race, but I think it's a very, very interesting. Uh, this was a class four judge, but all yeah. the horses in it are better than class four. Um, you have, well, so, the, sorry, the front three are. Yes. But the race, the race was won by Noble, very, very well bred uh, horse of Andrew Baldins, who um, made all basically a very, very good ride from Kieran Fallon. But my eye catcher, the horse I bat, that horse I still think has got a big, big future is Dukeman. Um, he got beat nearly three lengths here. Adam Kirby, I think Kieran Fallon got first run on him, but if the horse, I think it's a classic case of a horse that didn't act at Epsom. Yeah. When he asked him to open up, you can, if you watch the replay, you'll see the hesitation with the horse and the fact that he, he, he comes off a straight line. And I think it's one of those things, Judge, that you, you just talked about Chester. Uh, yes. Cer certainly Epsom. I've seen it happen at Goodwood where the jockey puts, say, the gun to the horse's head in metaphoric terms. Yes. Um, uh, although we've had ones where, no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. And he, um, you can see the horse come off a straight line and it's almost that the horse is frightened to let itself down. Now, Epsom, obviously, if you go there and see that, you can forgive that. I don't think we're going to see Dukeman at Epsom or a Goodwood anytime soon. I think he'll go back to a standard flat track. And I think, again, the point of this for me is we're putting out horses that I believe will be bigger prices than they should be next time. Yeah. I think I think the winner, Noble, is very good. Uh, he did act, and Kieran Fallon rode him with a lot of confidence and aggression, which can suit horses at Epsom. I think Dukeman was cautious. I think he's probably a better horse than Noble. In time, he'll prove to be. Now, he's three. He's coming to the. He's only had three runs in his career. I think the Crisfords will be keen to get him back out before the end of the year. Um, and he's the sort of horse I could see popping up now in, in a, a late season handicap because he is handicapped now. Yes. Um, and I think he'll be a very, very well handicapped horse. I could see him going to somewhere like Ascot late season or Doncaster, the, the uh, yeah. November meeting. And I think he'll pop up at a big price pretty soon. So I'm sticking with the Duke. I think he didn't like Epsom. I think he ran into a good horse that was very well ridden. But I think he's still got a big future. So I'm going to forgive him yesterday. I'm in forgiving mode this weekend. Yeah, it you, it you must be the... It's an horses in some of these um, these sort of like conditions race. Right? Well, they're not even conditions race, are they? Novice stakes type race. I was just telling you about the, um, obviously, the post impressionist race. You wouldn't have thought a Newcastle a novice stakes race would produce five horses, 88 and higher, would you? Um, at, at that side. So... I definitely would, from my point of view, I can see where you're coming from. Certainly, if you if you see something out of that race that finished just behind it, whether run half a sensible race, then you can even put another tick by it to have a little bit more on, because obviously that gives you a little bit more idea whether the form was stronger as well. So that's a, just a little tip from my point of view going forwards for those kind of races. It gives you an idea, of, you know, it, that sometimes visually you think that was a good performance, and it turns out it's not, doesn't it? You know, it works both ways. You, you can use things to your benefit. Yeah, and if you, if you suck 50 quid on Dukeman yesterday and he gets beat three lengths, your automatic response is to think, I've yeah. overrated him. Exactly. He isn't as good as we thought. And I think he could be as good as we thought. Yeah. Uh, and there, there are reasons why he got beat yesterday. And uh, yeah. I think he's going to prove to be, you know, we all want horses that we can make money out of back in. And I still believe he is one. Yeah. He's, he's only, like you say, he's very lightly raced. And you think that the future's in front of him as well, That's isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's got bad stacks of improvement in it. Yeah, definitely. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing. I think it was in um, the, the shape ABM, whatever his name, the bell with yellow colours, wasn't it, with the, the black spots? So um, probably cost yeah. a few quid as well, I should yeah. think. Yeah. So um, get on to my last one. I, I think we have a little life. chat about this horse as well. Um, this one for me is one that you've definitely got to have on your on your radar for next time out or the time after, specifically if it's in a big handicap on a Saturday on the TV. Um, I really like the trainer of this. I think everybody knows that I like David O'Mara, but this this horse, Cold Stare. I think you watched the race back. Um, the sprint races at Haydock on Saturday, you had absolutely no chance if you was drawn low. Absolutely no chance. Yeah. And he sort of the jockey, Daniel Tullock, oh, I do rate. I don't think he made his mind. He, he didn't know where he was going, and he ended up in the middle of the track in the marooned. But he travelled, didn't he travel well for such a long time in 
quite a good race. But if you have a look who won it, drawn 15, 14, 13, 10, 12, 17. Another investment ran very well in one. But for me, Cold Stair travelled very well. First time I've seen him travel again. This horse loves soft ground. It, it's all his best form is, is on soft ground. Got to get some, Simon, at some stage. We've got to have a, you know, a couple of weeks of rain at some stage soon. And this horse is going to revel in that. I, I've, had, I've had 72 hours of rain. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, you can send some over rain. here when we've got our soft ground horses yeah. running. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring a bucket back. Yeah, please do. Um, this this, this <laughs> also won an air last year off a mark of 87. Well, it's currently rated 75, I think it's 75. And 77. So that's why I had 70. I think the handicapper will probably drop him a couple of pounds because he, look, he's finished ninth. So he's probably going to drop in. Certainly, he's got to drop him a pound or two. This horse is getting very well handicapped now. It's coming to its time of year, and it's coming to it, you know the, the right conditions. For me, I'll be, I'll be giving this one a second look. Cold stare. Yeah. No, I I I tipped and backed cold stare on Saturday. And what I thought before the race, it was obvious that you needed to be at the near near rail. Absolutely. Now, if you watch if you watch the start. I was praying that Tudhook would sweep over and bag a position. And it looked like he had. Yes. The horse travelled. I just wish he'd have... Look, stay you're with damned his conviction if you do. Stay, stand side. Yeah. stay with his conviction and yeah. prayed for a, a, a run. Yeah. Because what he did to get a run ruined any chance that the horse Absolutely. had. Absolutely. I think, yeah, say the, the other one in that race, I think you probably know, there was another investment who's drawn one. He, yeah. he, he, he was the other one I think to myself, right? He's, he's gone in basically. If his previous race, he came sixth in that York race, the one I was talking about earlier, Lucky Man's race. And um, I, I think he, he's one that's quite interesting as well. But Cold Stare was definitely the one to take from that race. Yeah, my, my initial notes were. Would they come back to Haydock? Would they look at Donny, where there's a very yes. suitable race yeah. at the Definitely. November meeting? Or would they even, and, and Omira, you know, targets the track, would they look at finale weekend at York, which is often run on? Yeah, yeah, could do. It's it depends if it's going to, you know, obviously with its rating, when it's going to get in one of the bigger handicaps. But uh, there's got to be a race or two in this. I mean, like I say, one, I think it was November, well, no, it was October, he won at Air last year. Off a ten pound IMR, um, and he won well. But he's so well handicapped. Definitely, he's, he, he's ready well handicapped. It's a question, yeah. And it's one of them ones you think a little bit of money for. It's got, it's got to be backed as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. There's absolutely. I'm not. We're not suggesting at any time that Mr. O'Mara doesn't run horses on the merits every time if his no. lawyers are watching. But let's say allegedly there would be no need in having a long term plan for this horse. It's got to be the next. Well, he's getting. Now it's, it's now it's now it's time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean it's run most of the season. It's look, it's been dropped down the handicap. So <laughs> now it's it's got to be a bit. There's no point back in it. You know, in the summer when it's been running off of you know high eighties on fast ground, you want to be back in it in soft ground high seventies. That's when you want to start back in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, there you go, folks. Five horses for those trackers. Already said. Over the weekend, you know, Caradoc's been mentioned, yep. Golden Apollo, you know what I mean? These, yeah, these yeah. horses that we give, they do come in. And so get your track. I had another email this week about trackers, what we're talking about. Just Google, I mean, email, of course, but if you Google horse racing trackers, I know yes. that at the races, I have a brilliant one. I use it myself, uh, though we are yeah, not that fully one's, that one's at free. the races. Yeah. I, I personally use the, the I shouldn't yeah. say, I, I, I do use the racing post site. Obviously, you've got to subscribe to that. And I use yeah. I do use the tracker for that. Of course, you haven't got to back the horse necessarily if you don't think it's got the ideal conditions. No, it, it, it's you've got to use alert. a bit of, you, you know, yeah. there's no point. I wouldn't be back in cold stare if it ran in a group race next time out. You know, you've got to use a little bit of common sense. But if it was to against, run in a hand against, against soft ground, you know. Against yeah, yeah, that, you know, you know, yeah. you've got to use a little bit of common sense. But um, so the, the point is, if they get their ideal conditions, like Golden Apollo finally did, bosh, you know, it's, um, it's that's the time really, isn't it? What, what we're trying to get people to do, uh, and I know from meeting people at races that they do do, is to build up a portfolio of horses Absolutely. that we believe are well handicapped, ready to strike. So you, what you don't have that awful thing where you miss out when the horse is running. Yeah. And then it's too yeah. late. 
and so you've also, you've also got to be alert. good with your trackers as well. Is when they've won and you think, well, uh, might, maybe one more, but you've then got to drop them out as well. Yeah, oh, you've got, yeah. don't knock them out after one race. Whatever you do, you've always got to forgive something one run. And um, yeah. I, I always like to forgive. My maximum is two. So if they run badly, two, you know, I'll, I'll give them one last go, depending on the obviously, and then they go because otherwise you'll, you'll just be following one off a cliff. And there is there is the odd the odd horse that I've been doing with that with you know obviously people know I've been following Golden Apollo for a while but I mean I got back it I can I haven't backed it eighteen times this year so <laughs> so eighteen yeah. to one there you go <laughs> yeah and a lot of the horses we've mentioned are, are horses that appear in big field handicaps where you might have two or three runs where you're drawn yeah on exactly side. when and, and it's you always know. okay in these big fields especially with the extra places to have two bets in some of these races of I it. mean yeah. I mean it's it's mad you know. Especially, uh, for example, you know, like you've got Nomadic Empire and, you know, they're, they're both drawn low. You think, well, I, I can, you've got to make a decision sometimes, make a decision on one and on one the other side. Or if you think it's a, let's be honest, the Cambridgeshire the last six years, you've got been drawn in the 21 or above. And look what won the race. And I managed to swerve it. Also, it's drawn, drawn 20 something, one at 25 to one. So, yeah. you know, you, you can find them by using process of elimination and obviously using your form book. But um, it, obviously, if you went for the, the Cambridge and you think to yourself, well, obviously, it's been 20 off the last so many years. Have, if you're having three bets, have two high, one low. If you're only having two bets, make a decision, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Well, um, I think that brings us to a close. It does, yeah. I've obviously I've got, got, a, got me double up on, on the old... Um, yeah. You know, please, please uh, look into that. We're still doing yeah. the trial, got till the end of the month, but... Um, going well it's going well big winners started for the 14s hit them with uh, three big winners last week in a lot of yeah. places so uh you've got your last week judge i'm sure you're going to uh, hit the oh yeah I've been, yeah I've already, so i've got two up today and it's got a big week ahead it's art weekend yeah. as well come comes you know, so yeah. got, it's a it's a busy weekend so um and i mean it's been a sensational week for hfc in general and uh, i aim to continue yes. that from my lair this week so uh Work goes on as normal, just with Definitely. more rain than normal. <laughs> so, uh, well, I hope you get some sunshine, mate. It looks like it's a bit better than it has been. Yeah, it has, it has. Yeah, I appreciate it. So uh, we're going to have a great week. Judge going to have a great week, finish his trial. If you're in there, we're going to contact you uh, at the end of the week with a very, very tasty offer that you're going to want to get involved with him on a permanent basis. And we'll be back on, may well be Thursday. Uh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm flying on Friday and I don't think the pilot oh, well, will be too happy. We won't be doing Friday it, then. <laughs> it, I don't think it'd be too happy if I'm, uh, you know, in aisle three or whatever doing next year to be the judge. So we'll sort that. But keep yeah, an eye I on can the definitely channel. do Thursday, so that'd be fine yeah. by me. Yeah, get these, get these horses in your tracker. We will see you next Monday for more Judges Jewels, but we'll be back before then. Have a great week, everybody. And remember, wherever you are in the world, there's only... Holy Horses. Horses.